So we're fully into lockdown now. Um, lockdown part two, which has resulted obviously in the exhibition not being shown um, on the King's Road, which is a real shame. So what I thought I'd do is I'd produce a kind of a little five part mini series um, explaining the kind of thoughts behind the exhibition and um, a lot of the ideas behind the paintings. Um, because I can't see you in person, um, I thought I would kind of bring the exhibition to you. So please enjoy them and um, cast your mind for the first episode back to the start of last lockdown where I kind of came up with the initial concept. So what's the idea? Okay, I've recently been in Costa Rica and one thing they've got loads of is hummingbirds. So my concept or the kind of composition I'm thinking of is hummingbird surrounded by flowers, like color, movement, um, everything. I want the hummingbird in focus and the flowers kind of working with it within the composition um, to make it look great. But I don't have any flowers and I don't have a hummingbird. Right, so before we worry about the flowers and the hummingbird and how we're going to get the two together, um, first of all, I want to work out what's going to go into the canvas and the composition. And this is where this bad boy comes in. So, first of all, I kind of draw out some thumbnail sketches. And what I'm really looking for is how the eye is going to wander around the canvas and how flowers are going to complement hummingbird and hum hummingbird complement flowers. So this goes on for a couple of pages, lots more sketches, as you can see. Um, and I finally end up with this composition here, which I like, it works well, it's simple, and we've got flowers at the top, nice and bright, we swing down into this explosion of flowers down here, smashing into the hummingbird, uh, and the hummingbird in its turn is looking back at the flowers. So a really nicely balanced composition. Next stage is iPad technology. I use this as a bit more of a forgiving tool than the sketchbook, uh, and I can really easily edit stuff. So I kick off with light, work out where the light's coming from or where I want the light to come from, um, and then I'll go back into it and play around with colors, making sure that the colors are the right ones and that they are harmonious together. I next went about recreating the scene and uh, cleaned out the local florist and my lovely uh, landlady's garden and put together, using my camera, um, how I wanted the painting to look. Um, and the key thing was getting the light in the right place and making sure the colours worked. I even uh, managed to create a life-sized model of a hummingbird out of plasticine. Quick update, you'll be pleased to know that the life-size model of the hummingbird still exists. And uh, Tony, he's a little bit battered and bruised. He's been overworked over the last year, but we're confident that his modeling career will continue. So with Tony and flowers in place, uh, the next stage was working out the initial sketch. And this is where we go in with oils and quick drawing. And I'm looking at how the oils work with specific colors. So this was the first one. Um, I liked it, but didn't like it quite enough. So we moved on to the second one here, which was um, the kind of final initial sketch. And again, I came up with a lot more of the colors and also kind of simplifies the petals uh, and the flowers uh, to just get a better grasp of what is gonna go on within the painting, especially with regards to the background. I absolutely love this blue merging into green um, and then the blue the vertical stripes that go through it. And finally, the final piece. So going straight in on the canvas, using my reference sketches um, to build up the painting and decided to go with kind of orange and blush flowers, which then reflect onto the hummingbird um, and um, really work well with the blue and the green of the painting. Again, love the little orange raindrops coming down. I think it gives it a lot of movement and highlights um, various aspects, just bringing it all together. So after all that, this is the final piece, ready, up, framed. 
We've gone with a kind of shadow frame for this. And what we mean by shadow is uh, there's a small gap between the canvas and the frame itself. I really love how that works and it enables the kind of framing to have the same impact but without putting a massive border around it. And we've also got a little bit of elegant moon gold gilding going around the outside and it all serves to capture that kind of movement and colour going on inside the painting. Um, I love this painting, I think it's designed for a space like this, above a fireplace, a serious bit of a kind of showstopper as people walk in, uh, dominates a room and is a real talking piece. This throws me straight back to jungles of Costa Rica, um, the heat, the movement, the colour, um, and it's a really kind of key part of the exhibition. So, kicked off with this one. Um, I look forward to talking through some more paintings with you uh, later on. Thanks.